Hello YouTube! In this video I'm going to work on a new enemy called Doppelganger. Doppelganger is someone's evil twin, someone's look-alike. Basically an evil creature that can steal your identity. The main feature of this enemy is going to be the ability of spawning two similar to himself enemies. His behavior is going to be divided into four states. First of all, he's going to be in the approach state, and he will simply be moving towards the base. In the second state, he will instantiate a small cloud, and then he will spawn two similar enemies. Then he will continue moving towards the base until he is in attack range. If you kill the main doppelgangers, the clone will die as well. Stage 1, approach state. In order to create the doppelganger, I'm gonna use a class that I already made called enemy. I'll use some methods from there, but the basic idea is that I will check if I'm not in the attack range, and if the doppelganger isn't in attack range, he is just gonna move towards the base. And when he reaches, he is gonna call a method called deal damage, which basically deals damage to the player. So as we can see, he's moving towards the base, and now he's attacking the base. Next, what we're gonna do is make him spawn two similar to himself enemies. So basically, we're gonna move to the clone spawning state. Nice. Stage number two, clone spawning state. Now the goal is to make our doppelganger instantiate two clones similar to himself, basically. Also, we will store the instantiated clones in an array, so then when the doppelganger, when the main doppelganger dies, we can also kill uh, his clones. So what you'll see now is basically the doppelganger spawning two clones and then moving towards the base. What we're gonna do now is apply a doppelganger clone script to the doppelganger clones and give them the ability to move towards the base and attack it as well. This script is quite similar to the parent script, except for some small differences. And as you can see now, all of them are moving towards the base and attacking it as well. Next thing on our list is making them all split in different directions on the screen. And no, I'm not gonna name every state. Now, there might be a small problem with this system. The enemies might run off the screen, so in order to avoid that, I'm always choosing a spot on the screen, so the doppelganger and his clones will never go off the screen. Now, what I'm gonna do is make the doppelganger stop for a while while casting the spell, and this the amount of time he's gonna cast the spell is gonna be random. Well, not really random, it will have some boundaries, but each time it will be a different one. So yeah, as you can see, he stopped, and then he instantiated two clones. We're almost done, however, something's missing. There is no way of spawning the actual doppelganger, so for that we're gonna use the enemy system that they made before. The enemy system has a lot of parameters, first of which is the level parameter, and it will increment from level to level, and based on that it will basically affect the difficulty of the game. Then the next one is enemy prefabs, where you store all the prefabs for our enemies. In enemy spawn array we keep track of the spawned enemies in our game. The next array is called monster type amount, and here we can set the amount of each type of the enemies, and that amount of the enemies will spawn, basically. And uh, this array is correlated with the enemy's prefab, basically the first element represents the first element in both of the arrays, so element 0 being the snowman for both of them. Same thing for monster type spawn count, where we count how many monsters of each type have spawned. In monsters type probabilities, we can set the probability with each this kind of monster will spawn, thus that allows us to manipulate in which order the monsters are going to spawn. Monster total amount is pretty self-explanatory. Monster spawn frequency is basically how fast the enemies are going to spawn, and monster spawn uh, together limit is how many monsters will be spawning together. If you set it to two, there will never spawn more than two monsters at a time. And since we've now added our new doppelganger enemy to the prefab list, we can see him spawning as well as a usual enemy. The fact that this system uses so many variables gives me a lot of control over the spawning of the enemies. If I want to have a lot of enemies of one kind but spawn them at the very end of the level, I can simply set the monster type spawn amount to a big number but set the probability of him spawning to very low, and vice versa. 
The last thing we need is a small cloud whenever the doppelganger spawns his clones. Nice. For that I'm gonna use the temporary sprite that I animated in like 10 minutes in Photoshop. It will change soon as well as the main doppelganger sprite. It's also just a placeholder. It's basically the seal tamer but with different colors. So now as you can see the doppelganger is gonna stop, spawn a smoke cloud and then they will split in different directions. The interesting thing about it is that the animation of the smoke cloud is timed accordingly to the amount it takes the doppelganger to spawn the enemy. Because as you can remember the amount required for casting the spell is random between two boundaries and the smoke cloud is timed based on that as well. Next episode I'll be working on the penguin team system, way bigger system compared to this one, and it will allow you to build your own penguin team. If you found this video interesting or entertaining, please consider leaving a like and subscribing. Also let me know in the comments what you would like to see in the upcoming videos, which most probably will going to be posted every Monday from now on. Also you can find the links to my previous projects in the description below. So hopefully see you next Monday.